Hi, I'm Ashley Hart Adams, and congratulations, you made it. Your data is hot off the presses. And now that we've made our way out of questions land, where we asked a whole lot of questions, Dr. Megan Semino, a biological oceanographer, is here to explain why the penguins need your help. Hi, I'm Megan Semino, and I'm a biological oceanographer at the University of California, Santa Cruz. And I'm a PI with the Palmer Station Long-Term Ecological Research Program studying seabirds. The LTR is a long-term program at Palmer Station, Antarctica, where scientists collect the same measurements every year. And this program has been going since the early 90s. So we have an amazing long-term record of everything from sea ice to phytoplankton, to krill, to penguins, and even up to whales. To understand long-term changes, you need long-term observations. And you can't understand what a population is doing if you only have one year of data. You really need these regular measurements year after year over you know, many decades to understand what's going on. So it's really important to have this long-term data, especially at this study site, Palmer Station, because it's mo one of the most rapidly warming regions in the world. And Penguins are really sensitive species and they give us some clues into what the environment is doing. And you can tell that by how well their population is doing or how good the parents are doing at raising chicks. The main goal of my work is to understand the decline in the Adelie penguin population and the rise in the Gen 2 population. And this is a really interesting problem because both of these species eat krill, yet their populations are doing the opposite thing in the same place. So we're really focused in on studying how the landscape could be affecting their populations, how changing ocean conditions can be affecting them, and how changes in their prey could be affecting them kind of at the same time. We have collected so much data over the last 30 or so years that we really need help looking at it all. And we need more eyes on the data and different perspectives. So we're kind of trusting you with our data to help us interpret what's going on and help us learn about the system. And we're looking for new perspectives and new ideas and new solutions. When I was in school, I never met a scientist or never worked with real data. And here, you guys get to look at this amazing 30-year record, which a lot of blood, sweat, and tears went into making. It's a really amazing time series to give us a window into what climate change is doing to um, a really important penguin species. No scientist embarks on all this work just to keep it to themselves. It's time for us to share our data. Megan has given us a fantastic call to action. She wants us to take all of the data and information that we've acquired to share it with our community. So who exactly is a part of our community? Well, it's our family, our friends, our classmates, anyone we come across. I have one more really important question for you guys. How can we take our data and share it with others? But more importantly, how can we make them care? Well, the answer to that question and what you guys will end up creating is something called a data jam. A data jam is you taking your data and making it accessible for others. We're gonna show you guys a couple examples of previous data jams, but we wanna be very, very clear. There is no wrong way to data jam. Be expressive, be creative, be informative, be you, and let your data shine. <laughs>